In 2022, I was lucky enough to play a lot of really amazing games. I was fortunate enough to be able to stream these live in a segment that I call Shovelware Showdown. And as we know, not all games are created equal. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when movie licenses come for you? Bad Boys Miami Takedown. Oh my goodness. This game was released in 2004, developed by Blitz Games, published by Empire and Crave Entertainment. You take the role of the two cops, Marcus Burnett and Mike Lowry. No booty call on the side? Hell no. What? You and... I'm impressed. She's real sweet. This game kind of is the trifecta of everything bad in a video game. Terrible voice acting, terrible jank controls, horrible camera angles, completely cheap and jank quick time events for bosses. Okay, wait, that's more than three. Okay, there's a lot more to hate about this game. It really wants to be a third person duck and cover action game. It just falls short on every single front. I mean, it kind of has its moments. Like once you figure out the controls a little bit and understand how jank it is, like you sort of have fun. The combat's decent, but uh, it's just so bad in every other way. Ain't talking. This is shouting. This game is so bad. Metacritic gave it 36 out of 100. Game Informer, 4 out of 10. GameSpot, 3 out of 10. And the official PlayStation Magazine in the UK gave it 1 out of 10. On Game Trailer's top 10 worst video games ever, it placed number 3 for top 10 worst movie games. And I streamed it live. Yeah, and I beat the game. Oh my gosh, what kind of life am I living? It's called Curves. It's an indie game. I don't think a lot of people know about it. Maybe I'm the only one who plays it. A couple people here playing, one person playing it. Get your popcorn and get your drinks. This game is called Curves. Released April 14th, 2021 by developer and publisher Starmyth. When I saw this on Steam, of course it was recommended to me. Why Steam? Why do you do this? Oh boy. It knows the games I like. <laughs> I thought this was a water slide oh simulator. Insta buy for me. The developer describes this game, and I quote, really just relaxing and chilling, wholesome and beautiful. Wow. That is the description of the game. This is water slide simulator. It's really a physics based hoverboard experience. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can just scale anything. You can go, wee, here we go. You play as this woman with booty shorts on, or a bunny suit, or a very skimpy bathing suit, and you get to hover around on this water slide, or just wherever the hell you want to go. Oh boy. Oh. There's skirt physics. I mean, this is one of those games They're that flying. shouldn't be good at all. And uh, I'll be honest, I actually had a lot of fun playing this. Putting kind of the perv character and uh, fetish character aside here, you kind of have a pretty good game here. No. Time trials, speed runs, there's a lot of strats that can be had in here. I mean, I hate to admit, but yeah, I kind of actually really do like this game. Def definitely for the, the speed runs and time trials. Definitely for those only. Those only. I'm sorry, bud. Life. See, this is, it's, it's my life. It's my life. Look at him. He, Bob, he won't even look at me. He's so mad. Bob, don't be mad at me. All right. Okay. All right. So there's already one vote on <laughs> Dog's Life for Bob, from Bob. Here we have Dog's Life, developed by Frontier Developments and released in 2004. That's Daisy. Lately, she's been ignoring me. Well, we'll see about that. Oh my gosh, that dog's got a lot of gas. And on the surface, it looks like your traditional, typical children's game. You play a dog. A cute little foxhound running around, exploring the American countryside. Sounds like a great grand old time. As you start playing it though, things start to turn a little bit. You start to notice that the dog is very gassy farts a lot in fact farts all the time this is part of the tactic that this dog has you fart you smell other farts you use it to get into different places 
following the fart stench, it's kind of odd. And the more I was playing it, I was also noticing that there were a lot of really weird sexual innuendos and adult themed jokes in here. And I thought, this is a kid's game. What is going on? It was very, very weird. This whole time, you're really trying to save your Labrador retriever friend named Daisy, whom you have a crush on. You're trying to rescue her because she has been kidnapped, evidently. And as you play and progress, things start to make a turn for the worst. It's revealed later on as you play that Miss Peaches, who is the head of a cat food company, is arranging for all dogs to be caught, smuggled to a factory where they will become cat food. I am not kidding. You set off on your quest to rescue as many dogs as you can, bringing them back home, and eventually make it to the facility where Daisy's being held. You snatch her right off the conveyor belt, right before she goes in to be crushed and made into cat food, only to find Miss Peaches to appear. She has a shotgun in hand. You end up farting on her, sending her falling into the conveyor belt, which kills her and turns her into cat food. What are we playing? This game is wild. I feel like they thought kids would not make it to the end of the game or not even play it that far and or understand anything about it. But as a grown ass adult playing this, <laughs> this is wild. You can sneak into a store for a quick snack. Don't buy this for your kids. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your help. I'm going to need your help. Please help me. I got like a mini map down there at the bottom. You see that? You can barely see. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're back. They're back. I'm trapped. Ah, uh, yes, Dracula, the days of gore. This is the game that I played during the October Spooktober horror game month. I was looking for something with Dracula and came across this on an Abandonware site. Said it was a first person shooter. That was a Dracula game. And I thought, well, I've never played a first person Dracula game. This sounds awesome. So I downloaded it. What is that? Uh Developed by Wolf Group and released in 2006 for Windows only. Honestly, I couldn't find jack about this game. I found one old article from 2006 on Moby Games, and it says here, the Days of Gore is a first-person shooter with horror elements. In each 11 levels, you seek out and destroy crystals, rescue hostages. Your weapons include a stake, a pistol, shotgun, gatling gun, and crossbow. Most enemies are a one-shot collapse, allowing you to finish them off with your stake. Controls, super jank, no FOV. It is very, very stiff. It runs at a very low rate resolution. I can't change anything about it. If I alt tab, if I hit escape, if I go out of the menu at all, the game crashes my entire computer. No, no, no. Not just the game. It crashes my computer. The game is complete with horrible combat. Enemies just walking, clipping right through walls. Where's it going? And the absolute worst of everything is rescuing the hostages. You have to touch the hostage and stay in the vicinity of where they're sitting in order to rescue them. However, when you walk up and touch a hostage to rescue them, they are moving around slightly. And that movement, that animation breaks the rescuing sequence. Imagine making this game and then not playing it to find out that this is so f broken. So you could get so close, almost, 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 and then it fails and goes right back. Or in some cases, it just sits there and flickers and spazzes out. It's flickering so much like it's not registering anything. We're in for a ride, folks. Strap in. Bruh. Bruh. Jesus. After this, people will still be ignorant and buy it. No more. Read, 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 read what this is. Yes!
We've come so far. We made it to the end of the game, the very last level. There's no turning back yes. now. I drug my community right through the trenches with me. We made it. I'm shooting enemies, expecting to fight this big, massive battle with Dracula. But no, I'm just shooting enemies. And then this happens. It just ends. It just ends. And it plays techno. <laughs> and it's game over. This is one of the worst games I've ever played. I own every shovelware game there is, especially racing. And I love it. You know, we can really give thanks to Mario Kart and Diddy Kong Racing and a bunch of the earlier kart racing games, especially on the N64, that really blew up this genre. I own so many of these, I don't know why, I just love them, but I also hate them. This is Nicktoons Racing released on the PlayStation 1. And I feel like at first glance here, it has a lot going for it. The maps actually are really good, very colorful. Level design's pretty good. Love that it has the Nickelodeon tie-in. Love Racing as Tommy, <laughs> Stimpy from Ren and Stimpy, of course and a bunch of other classic Nickelodeon characters. Yeah, and even the handling is pretty good. I mean, I don't have a whole lot to complain about it, except for one major thing. It is so cheap. Now, as we all know with these kart racing games, there's always some sort of imbalance with the weapons. Yes, it exists. And I'm looking right directly at you, Mario Kart Wii. But in this game, it's on a whole nother level. It doesn't matter. You get first place anywhere in the race, you're getting taken out. It's so bad that I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I just want to just show a montage of all all of the complete garbage that this game throws at you. Oh, damn it. Dude, these weapons. Look at these weapons. Oh, my. Dude, they're no joke. They are no joke. Dude, this is Mario Kart Wii all over again. Freaking headshot bot AI here. No, not it. Dude, the same corner every single time. No, 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 no. Oh, you son of a. Wait, didn't I cross that second? What the fuck? Brandon, hello, good evening. Oh, look at this, look at this. Oh, give me it. Oh, come on. Let me have a little victory here. You would think it'd be easy as a kid game. It's not. See, I got, I had what I had one good win there. I had, I got every single AI. I got every single one in my attack. Everyone got it. But then the second after that, they're like, see ya. This game, there should be no question. You know, I own games like this and I love them. This ought to be really bad. World scariest police chases, all the speed, all the insanity, all the action. This game. Player discretion is advised. There he is, Mr. John Bunnell. This is exactly how it goes. <laughs> if you're like me, you cannot get enough of those LA car chase scenes. They happen nightly, and I just go down that YouTube rabbit hole. Somehow, I go from either watching twerking videos to then watching scary police chases, and it's amazing. <laughs> I love them. So you think a game like this would really fit the bill. World's scariest police chases. And I thought, damn, this is actually really high class. It's narrated with voiceover from John Bunnell, Mr. Wildest Police Chases himself. And then when you look at the cover of the game, you're like, man, 
yeah, look at this. It's really exciting. There's police cars going all over the place. There's chases, there's crashes, there's lights and guns blazing. Like, oh, this is actually going to be a high action, fun game. But it's kind of not any of that. It's really just a police trainer simulation type game. Hey there, Officer Dick Dangle. Would you like to try to learn how to do a J turn? You like to learn how to do a 180 turn shooting targets? Welcome to the Academy. It's along the road. Quickly. No, oh, shh. You have knocked over too many cones. <laughs> too many? Oh, I hit one cone. Now, don't get me wrong, it does have its moments. Again, you know, I try to look at the good and the bad. They do have missions where you're supposed to chase the bad guy and kind of sort of a destruction derby type event where you're supposed to ram them and pit maneuver and try to take them out. But the actual mechanic of it is ridiculous. When you hit an enemy, you yourself take damage. So unless you do it perfectly and or the AI messes up and runs into a pole or a wall or something, stuff like this happens. Dude, if I touch anything, I'm dead. This guy has to run into a pole or something. Control. Dude, Unit one is out of come on! What the f***? Roger that. Remain where you are. Backup is on its way. I want to call it like a movie tie-in or something, because like we have these different scenes that really I feel like are right out of a movie. Like this scene here where we're basically supposed to follow and then unload two million rounds into this car to try to stop it. And of course, the bullets do nothing. Then we have this scene right here, which is basically from Speed. Remember that movie? This bus is hijacked and driving crazy and causing terror throughout the city. Oh my gosh, he's just running people off the road. And then of course, folks, you know what's coming next. No shovelware game is complete without the escort slash deliver package slash beat the clock mission. These are the worst. I hate these missions in every game ever made, period. Let's see, what am I supposed to do? Oh yeah, that's right, I'm supposed to go and pick up the bomb, pick up the package, put it in my van, and defuse it. What do you think you do? Yeah, you drive up and you touch the bomb. <laughs> Wait, what? Nope, you don't. Mayhem, destruction, the trademarks of a madman bent on turning a city into a world of chaotic anarchy. Sometimes, all the training in the world can't prevent a psychotic terrorist with nothing to lose from exacting his twisted idea of retribution. And if you think that's bad enough, you gotta do this in a really short time frame. Look at the countdown timer. We're not gonna make it. You don't have time to do anything. And lastly, if that wasn't bad enough, these bombs are placed throughout the entire city. Look at this mini-map. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Now, don't get me wrong, I like a good challenge once in a while, but when the mechanic is just cheap, annoying, impossible, it's just not fun anymore. Roger that. Stay on his tail. It's just not fun. We're not gonna make it. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm so hard on the brakes, the thing is like <laughs> This game sucks. You know, they say every person has their breaking point. I've kept it really cool. We're cool. It's fine. Everything's okay. But after a while, you just hit that wall and you flip out and you go berserk. You want hot dogs? You want hot dogs? I got your hot dogs right here. I got your weenies, all right? Here you go, eat up, nom 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 nom. Yeah, big fat ballpark. Just big fat plompers. Got your ketchup? We need to get some more ketchup, put that on the grocery list. And we got some mustard. We want some big fat juicy plomp ballpark hot dogs. Mmm, eat up, Woody Woodpecker. You little pecker, eat up, eat them. Nah. Willy Walrus, you fangle tooth chili penguin, you frost bit bit. Eat up, have some dogs.
stop it. Get some help. 